Joe's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, as most of my viewers know, that I'm a concrete contractor by trade. And in the construction business, uh, there's tools that benefit you no matter what trade you are. Uh, you might call this tools of the trade. And that's the situation we're going to be doing here today. What I have in the concrete industry is a sludge hammer. And this is what we use to drive wood and metal stakes into the ground to set forms. Uh, typically, it is a 6 to 8 pound hammer although they are available 6, 8, 10, and 12. Uh, 6 pound hammers to 8 pound hammers are ideal weight wise. Uh, the heads on them are a little bit too small and less desirable, but that's what works. Uh, 10, 12 pound hammers are a little too heavy to use, kind of wear you out after swinging these things all day long. But the heads on them are much larger and gives you a nice surface to work with. So that's what we've got here today. I have found myself a 10 pound sludge hammer. Found it, looks like it's in great shape. It looks like it's a rough neck. Maybe not too old, but not used very often. Set out behind the shed or something. It's got some weather to it. We're gonna work this thing and, and get this to where it's uh, serviceable in the field. What I plan on doing here is taking this and I'm gonna cut off about an inch and a half off of each side of this. Chuck it up in the mill, machine both surfaces, flatten both sides nice and flat and then put it in the lathe and get a bevel back on this thing. Install the handle and get this thing back in service. When I'm all done, I'm hoping this is somewhere between six, six and a half, maybe seven pounds max, and it's gonna provide a good tool in the field for most of the guys. So let's get started today. All right, so the first thing I need to do is to get this handle off. Now, there's probably several or several ways to, to do this. You know, this, this although the sledgehammer looks old, uh, I don't think this thing had much use at all. It is, that handle is in there so tight. And usually when I take these little circus, uh, circle rings out or these steel wedges, uh, just using a punch like this lifts them right out. But no, of course not. You know, this is, uh, everything's got to be hard for me. So I had a result in drilling the center out and uh, trying to get it out then. I still couldn't do it. I ended up having to drill the outer edge of it uh, with a smaller drill to clean up the wood a little bit to even loosen up further. And, you know, um, once I did that, then it was a little bit easier to get the ring out. And that came right out then. Perfect. All right, I was trying to drill this out. Oh, oh, well... Things don't work sometimes the way you're hoping. That sledgehammer just flipped right out of the vise. But anyways, once I got everything all out, I was able to take the sledgehammer head off really easy. We're going to save that handle a little bit later on. We're going to install that back in here. But for now, we're going to get this thing marked up. And, you know, I, I decided to take about an inch and an eighth off. Uh, I think I said earlier an inch and a half. But uh, this is uh, an inch and an eighth. Uh, I wanted to keep it right at about five inches in length. Uh, across uh, that being the which I think is a, is a good length so I got it in the porter band right here and I'm starting to cut the slices off of this thing and I got to tell you this is sped up obviously but it took me literally I don't know 10 minutes aside to to cut this wedge off right here this slice you know I somehow think that this is is definitely some uh, hardened steel to a certain degree because it just seemed like everything I did uh, you'll see when we get going with the machining and everything it just seemed to, like it was like it was really hard and that should be you know sledgehammer they, they probably do want some sort of hardness to it but uh, nevertheless I'm just working my way through here cutting the slices off and I'm hoping uh, you know that uh, at the very end, I'm going to hang on to these uh, slices right here. We're going to weigh everything up and just uh, see. Hopefully, we're going to end up with somewhere around six and a half pounds or so. That would be great. Uh, the trusty uh, DeWalt Porta Van had no issues going right through here. That blade's still sharp as ever and uh, did a great job. So, I'll take it over here to my mill and I'm just going to uh, get this end mill right here and I'm just resurfacing a little bit of uh, all the sides on this right here. Now, this is just for decorative purposes here. This is uh, the sides that I really need to get nice and square at the very ends I cut off. But, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not a machinist by any uh, means at all. This, uh, you know, I, I don't get a chance to do any kind of machining. And so, when I get a little chance to do something, I just want to kind of have fun with it a little bit. And I just thought by 
by running it through the mill right here with this end mill, cleaning things up all the way around. Uh, uh, it was just kind of fun. Not necessary, but fun. Made it uh, look a lot uh, more attractive and, and nice. I was able to either on this side right here, even this is where they've got the uh, the stamp of the of the weight and everything inside of this, I was able to actually save that. I just took off like a 16th off the top of this, and uh, uh, it worked out really good. It's a good look to it. You know, my father-in-law gave me this mill. He's a retired machinist and gave me thousands of dollars worth of tooling. And, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm doing or no, don't know which tool to use. Like I said, I'm not a machinist. I've gone to him for some advice, and he's taught me well and, and told me some of the things I need to do. And, and that's, I, I'm just self-taught, and I, I'm not, maybe not be doing, I'm, maybe I'm not doing this the way it should be done, but uh, it, it's working, and uh, it was kind of fun playing with it. And there it is, you know, so I got that. Now it's time to get this end piece. Now, I've got it chucked up in the in the mill vise there, and you might see those things are, I, I, I was told they're called parallels, and I just wanted to get a little bit more height in there because it was so tall, I, I didn't want it to be moving around as I was cutting this off. And I took my mini uh, square and squared it up to the vise, so at least I'm in there nice and level. And I, my first cut right here should be when I get this all cut off, all the way around it should be nice and flat and I'll be able to flip it around it should be nice and square on the other side so I can uh, clean up the other side and everything should end up being nice and square you know when I ran this thing through the bandsaw it was off a little bit by uh, maybe an eighth of an inch uh, the, the cut was a little crooked and so that's what I'm doing I'm just cleaning this up this is the final pass on this side after I got everything cut off and uh, I'm just uh, cleaning things up you know, it looks like there's some lines and stuff in there. It appears like there is. Um, uh, but when you actually run your finger across there, uh, like you did right here in a minute, uh, it is perfectly flat. I mean, there's no ridges at all. So I just cleaned off the vise right there, got everything back in, took my square, double-checked. It's perfectly square. And then just uh, cleaned this, pro uh, repeated the process and just cleaned it up on this side. Now this side here wasn't quite as as far out as the other side. There might have been a sixteenth an inch of a uh, difference from the from the bandsaw here. So it was just nice. By the way, this 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 end mill that I found in the toolbox was brand new, so that made it nice, nice and sharp, cut real well. And this will probably be the the cleanup pass right here. Yeah, I got uh, plenty of lubricant on there, and in it, it cut really smooth and nice. All right, so I took it over to the 42-inch Atlas. This is, again, a, an old-school lathe that my father-in-law gave me. I restored a while back and uh, took out the three-jaw truck and installed the four-jaw chuck right here. And, again, um, this is all a bunch of stuff that he had given me for all this. I'm very fortunate uh, to have all these tooling. Once I got everything all in there and indicated that uh, it's time to start cutting the bevel on this. Now, this is where I was having a really hard time. Uh, leading me to believe that this is definitely some sort of hardened steel because uh, I this should have cut it's just a simple little bevel on the end right here and I had such a hard time uh, cutting this in and you might even see some sparks flying here um, you know just coming off of there that normally you you know this this cuts really you know, a couple of really good passes right in here and it just trims that edge off really good but man this was I was struggling with this but uh, ultimately, I was able to uh, get it done. You know, I just thought maybe they might have uh, hardened the ends of the of the sledgehammer from the factory, and, uh, and maybe that's what it is. It was just hardened in a little bit farther, but ultimately I got it. Loosened off everything and flipped it around to repeat the process. Got everything all tightened up and indicated and running true. And again, this is so, I had such a hard time with this. Uh, I even went to change uh, tools to think that uh, maybe there was something wrong with my cutting tool. And I've, I've got uh, literally, you know, you know, 10 or 15 of these things. And I uh, checked them. They all seemed to be real sharp. Uh, there was no dullness to any of them. But I was getting the same results with every one of them. You can see the sparks flying right there. And all I'm doing, like I said, is just trying to take an edge off right here. And it was uh, extremely difficult. But... Uh, Anyway, I stayed with it until I got it done. I took a little file just to knock off the burrs on the very end, and, and there it is. Pretty happy the way that turned out. I just took a wire wheel and cleaned up everything else uh, that didn't get hit with the mill, the end mill. And it's time to put the handle on. 
and uh, like I said, there's uh, there's no real length to this handle. It's like personal preference. I like them right around 20 inches. This is what I marked, and I just cut the thing off, and then just took a wood rasp right here to uh, remove some of the wood uh, to make it go back into the end of the sledgehammer. Now. This wood is in really good shape. The only the only damage done to it, and there's really no damage to it at all, other than it looks like it'd been weathered uh, a little bit on the outside. Uh, the wood's in excellent shape, nice and hard and clean. No rot, no rot to it whatsoever. So I got everything all cleaned up right here and trimmed down to where I could get the uh, the head in. Took it over to the bandsaw, put a slice in it, and I uh, create a wedge. Now, this is poplar. This is what I'm using. It's a little bit softer wood. Uh, you know, I've tried some harder woods before, some, some oak and some walnut, and those don't work at all. The softer woods definitely seem to work well uh, for wedges. And so I just took some sandpaper right here and took off the, uh, uh, the old part that was damaged from the weather, cleaned it up, and now it's time to fit that head in there. And nice and snug fit, drove that thing down. And uh, so far, so good. It's the perfect, perfect length and fit in there really nice. Now, I saw a Wrangler Star do this one time, put some boiled linseed oil on the wedge to drive it in there. And so, I don't, I don't know, I'm just following his, his uh, application there. Don't know if it's right or wrong, but that uh, seemed to work really good. Let's cut it off flush, and then uh, it's time to drive that circle ring back in there. Uh, a little bit of linseed oil on there, and uh, I just... Put that retainer back in, hammered her down nice and flush, and there it is. That worked out pretty good. A little boiled linseed oil on the handle, a couple two or three coats to bring it back to life. And that's the job. Well done. Uh, that turned out pretty good. I'm pretty pleased the way that turned out. And there it is. All completed. And there are those the two wedges of the two slices. They're right at three and a quarter pounds. That's making that hammer from 10 pounds to six and three quarter pounds, the perfect weight. This is gonna make one of my guys pretty happy. They're gonna enjoy using this in the field. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out my website, jimbosgarage.com, and follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.